Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and in today's video we're going to be working on these J Crew by Alden. So technically they're Aldens. Marcus already did a little bit of work with some patina on there, and uh, now I got to tear them down, do the uh, new welt and new soles. So come join us, check it out, and let's have some fun with these. everyone so thank you for joining us as you can tell these uh aldens here we're gonna call them aldens even though it says j crew in there you might be able to see that down in there they are after all made by alden they've had a little bit of work done before in the past uh this is an aftermarket heel on these looks like these are the original soles however and the heel base is definitely also an original too um but there were some heel plates you can see some little holes there before some cheap plastic toe plates before but we're going to be getting rid of that anyways so we're just going to jump into it start breaking it down and uh, continue on we're going to actually in these we're going to go ahead and replace the welt and basically tear everything off of the bottom clean it out and completely redo it So real quick, I was going to show, um, as you saw, I was pulling out some of these nails. I hate it when cobblers do that kind of nailing work and stuff. Um, I mean, we do that on certain types of heels, but this is a type of cobbler that has a tendency to just put nails all around all the time. It drives me nuts. However, I did come across an issue here that this leather is starting to crack right here on this heel base. You can see it right there. It's cracking and everything and you can see these abnormal little spots here it means that the leather has started to rot and it's starting to rip so I'm actually gonna go ahead and just remove the heel base along with the sole on these so that uh, we replace that heel base because it's it's done for sometimes we have to do that unfortunately um, we can't tell all the time when a heel base is not doing so well even though I'm pulling it up and it seems like it's doing nicely and everything but as soon as I start getting close to the nails these things are just ripping basically and uh yeah i think it's just the end of the life for these heel bases so just thought i'd point that out so let me go ahead and just start breaking down the uh the soles then
All right, everyone, so I've got the sole off completely here. As you saw, I was taking it off along with the welt here, which is perfectly common to do along with the welt. Otherwise, there's a different way where I take off the sole first and the midsole and then take off the welt, which I can do, but that's just additional work. I only do that when I really, really have to. Um, this, for those of you who might be wondering, all this plastic and stuff, this is actually very commonly found in a lot of shoes just because that's actually how the uh, manufacturing process has worked. So when the shoe is at this stage before the welt is put on, they have this whole upper or the top of the shoe wrapped in a plastic. And so that protects the uppers. And then when they're stitching on the welt and everything, the soles are being put on, the uppers are protected for a longer period of time that way and uh, doesn't get affected. We end up being a little bit more careful and try to make sure that nothing happens to it, but wrapping it in a plastic, it, it's kind of a pain because they're still getting a final treatment done afterwards anyways on top of it. But, ugh, that's some, I hate this, I hate this stuff here. You can see this is rusted up from use, so we're gonna make sure to clean that up. But the type of adhesive that they used is super sticky and gummy. It's gross, it's like having a booger on your finger. But at this stage we got that cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the cork and you can see all these little pieces of thread here. This is the thread that was holding that welt on basically. So I'm gonna have to go through and pull it. Most of it I'll have to pull from the inside. So I'm going to just start cleaning all this up. Well, as you all saw, that came out very easily. This is actually a little felt material that they use kind of as a kind of a liner in here. It's during the manufacturing process that they put this on a lot of times to help with the gimming to keep it kind of reinforced. And again, it's strictly more of during the manufacturing process. We don't really need it during the resole process. The shoe is not needing it either. So it kind of made my life a little bit easier just pulling it out just like that in a whole piece, which is really cool. So this whole section and all that thread right there is uh, going by because it is quite literally not needed in this shoe at all. We're gonna be making sure that this is reinforced nicely with cork and everything. And uh, yeah, so that, that really cut down the problems that I thought I might have as far as picking all the stitches. So this is gonna be a lot easier than I expected. So just gonna do the same thing with the other shoe and uh, get it cleaned up and let's continue on. All right, everyone, so I showed you guys the plastic. So that plastic stuff, if you ever see it, you can definitely grab that if you have like a pair of needle nose pliers or some tweezers, you can pull it and yank it out. It's not gonna cause any kind of harm whatsoever. However, I do wanna point out, see these little staples? Maybe you guys see them, maybe right there, there's one. It's just a little itty bitty staple. I don't know if I can get this thing to focus, but there are these little staples that go all the way around, or at least a majority of the areas. And that's something that's done during the manufacturing in order to hold the upper to the gemming, which is this felt right here. This uh, felt, which is called the gemming, gets glued to this uh, insole or footbed, which is what your foot usually sits on. However, in order to keep it secure with the upper as well, they run these little staples in and it temporarily holds it until they get the welt stitched on. Now these staples, a lot of times they have no structural use anymore at this point, uh, now that the shoe is assembled. Oh, I got a loose little strand here. But um, if you ever see it sticking out of your shoe, don't grab and pull on it either, you know, whenever you're having it serviced at your local cobbler or anything, ask them about it, see if they can take care of it. Otherwise, um, my best recommendation, leave it as is, get in there with some clippers of some sort, some kind of, uh, I don't even have any around here because I don't use them as often, but something that can clip through wire basically smaller than this obviously but clip it as close as you can and just leave it because unfortunately if you pull it on the way out that staple can cause some damage either you know to the gimming it can cause some damage to the leather upper itself to the weld and a lot of times because you're pulling it outward it could also damage the um the uppers uh finish you know scratch it up and everything so definitely be careful with those little staples 
if you see the plastic, you're perfectly fine. Yank it all you want. It's not going to do anything. That's what they do from the factories. They get in there and they try to yank it, cut it out, and do whatever. So I just wanted to point that out. But uh, at this point, I need to get the welts prepared for these because we're going to be putting on a new split welt. And those usually come in neutral. So let me go grab one real quick and let you see what it looks like. All right, everyone. So I've got some split welts here. As you can see, it's got a neutral color there, so it doesn't really have any coloring. There's that little split when it opens up right there. That's the part that ends up standing up. Grab the original soles here. You can see that little wall right here standing. That's that wall that's going to be standing up. That's why it's called a split welt, because the leather is quite literally split right there. You can see that. So right now, i got to make sure to change the color. And so I picked uh, the chocolate brown. Seems to have been a nice color that matches it fairly close to what originally was on there. I got to make sure to go ahead and go through and condition it just like that. Afterwards, I'll take it to the buffer and buff it up. Now, one key, very important thing that some cobblers end up missing, I've noticed, because split weld is not common actually in our industry. A lot of cobblers do not use split weld, do not want to use split weld. They don't even care what it is. But for those who may be watching and know what split weld is and want to get into using it, very key important thing, the side that comes up like that, where the split is, that goes up the side of the wall of the shoe or the side of the shoe, got to make sure you get that taken care of too get that good color in there as well because that's going to be very very noticeable and very visible so i'm going to go ahead and just go through this entire strip here um i'll do the second one a little bit later as well because my main goal is when i start to stitch this i want to stitch this one this leather is as malleable as possible and while it's still a little bit damp from the conditioner it's going to be a good thing to do um as well that all the conditioning agents because this saphir polish the beauty cure that i use it has almond oil in it so it's going to help nourish that leather at the same time and make it nice and soft so that i can you know be able to work it a little easier after it's all completely dried and everything then i can continue on and progress with it otherwise the other option is that if we use a pre-made strap that already has, or not a pre-made strap, a welt that already has color on it, usually those they use an acrylic. Um, you find that even on very high-end luxury shoes that are over a thousand, you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, they use the same type of welt as like we do. And if it has that acrylic finish on there, then we have to let it soak in water for a while before we do so. But because I'm actually conditioning and treating up this leather then uh i can uh i can definitely end up stitching it without having to soak this thing but if i let this sit and dry overnight then i definitely want to make sure i soak it so all right now one other thing i will point out as you can see the color on here it's not a complete solid color you know it's got a little bit of that grain of the leather and everything showing through which I personally prefer, if I wanted it to be more of a solid color, I'd actually take a alcohol-based dye to it and then dye it, let it sit for a while, and then do the conditioning. Usually I do that with much darker colors, say um, a dark brown or a black, um, navy, or if I need a bright color even too, so I have a little bit more of a solid color structure, then I'll use a dye. But a lot of these browns and beige and tan ones, I really love the look of natural leather, and this really shows the more natural effect of it.
so we've got the welt all stitched on and everything. Got the shanks there all cleaned up and they're glued in as well. I had to make sure to get all that rust off of there pretty good. And uh, yeah, now it's time for the cork. I'm gonna have to do two layers because you can see how, how deep that cavity is right here. So it's pretty deep. So we definitely wanna make sure to use two layers. I currently, unfortunately, am out of stock of the really thick cork that I typically would use. Um, Obviously, there's a number of back orders with a lot of material and supplies out there at the moment, at the time of this recording. So hopefully that changes soon and we can get everything we can back in stock. But just because I use two layers does not mean that, you know, something's going to go wrong. No, it's it's just to be able to fill in that cavity a little more efficiently and so that there's no kind of issues for the person that's going to be wearing them because if I don't put enough cork in here, he's going to feel it. And we want to make sure he's got as much comfortability with these shoes and as much insulation as well as possible too. So stick the corks in. I'm just going to fill them, on, fill them all in. These are the ones that I'm using right now at the moment. And uh, like I said, usually we have one that's about double that thickness and I'm just unfortunately out of stock at the moment. So So we've got these all stitched up and what I'm going to do is go ahead and clean up right here where the stitching is because it kind of raises up just a tad bit uh, when we when the knife cuts in and channels everything as, as you can see it might stick up so when I put the toe plate back on it doesn't sit quite flush it kind of wobbles a little bit and don't worry I am not cutting through the stitches I know some of you guys out there might be you know, kind of wondering like oh is he cutting through the stitches no I'm not 
the other thing is like if we do ever cut through stitches like say it's a brand new pair of shoes and sometimes the factory doesn't channel it deep enough or anything and so we kind of have to cut through the stitches there we tend to use a uh, binding agent so it's technically a type of super glue that we use like these guys here and it's a certain consistency where once it gets into the thread especially if it's nylon it kind of has a chemical reaction occur where it binds the thread and melts it a little bit and so reinforces that area plus at the end of the day if you wear through your stitches on any side of the shoe like right here or here or on the toe majority of the structural integrity of the sole being attached comes from the adhesive actually not as much from the stitches the stitches are just an additional reinforcement as well so they kind of work hand in hand very well so make sure that all lines up give it a tap to make sure it's nice and flush in position looks real nice there get my screws here I'm trying to hold the toe plate in hand while getting the screws out of the little box and I got some super glue all over my finger too and it's kind of hard to grasp things sometimes okay. first one and second one All right, and then the third one, I'll grab my little punch here. Punch a hole, because if I don't punch a small hole in it, the screws kind of get too much tension on them and they end up snapping. And it's never fun having to deal with that, either digging out that part that broke or having to make a new hole, in other words, and making sure it works right. go beautiful so it's on there nice and flush and everything and at this point um i do need to start on the heel bases however turns out we just ran out of the pre-built leather stacked heel bases because the old one is just shot um and i i'm waiting for all the materials i need uh the leather to come in the sheets of leather that i use and the pre-built as well that are a solid leather type i am surprisingly completely out of stock of them i went to grab one off the shelf and i'm like what where did it go i i had one set aside for these specifically but uh somebody here at the shop had gone ahead and grabbed it for another job and now i'm out of heel bases so at the moment we're at this stage i'm gonna go ahead and uh actually take some neutral cream and apply that to the bottom to make sure that uh, the bottom is protected because we're going to just leave this one neutral and everything and i'm going to hammer out these edges just a tad bit more and continue on so we'll see you back in a little bit when the heel bases are in should be in tomorrow by my time basically for you guys it's only a few seconds so we'll see you back here in just a few seconds all right everyone we've got our heel bases in so i've got them on here but i was going to show you guys here what they look like um problem is they also come in different sizes so i had some of the smaller size available and they weren't going to fit in any form or way but this is what the leather stacked heel bases that are pre-built that we have this is the thicker version the thinner one is about half the thickness of this one here and uh, these are probably some of the best heel bases i've ever come across that are actually pre-built that are supplied I started carrying it so these things are phenomenal um they're a good leather they're not cheap quality or anything where some pre-built heel bases i've come across where they actually use a fiberboard material or very very cheap leather sorry i had to hammer the nail in there but uh yeah that's what we have on here and what i did i can pull this off the last sorry i got interrupted with a phone call but uh so this is what we'd gone ahead and done uh just like original the heel base was or heel block some of you guys call them but they were nailed from the outside there not from the inside so we're going to keep it as original as possible so i'd gone ahead and punched some holes here first with a punch all just like one of these guys here punch the holes to have a good guide on it because if i don't the nails have a tendency to bend and we're using our standard gripper nails that have the little ridges here on the side. Maybe maybe the camera can show it. I don't know. 
just these little ribs here that tend to grip really nicely. And I kind of like a brand new heel base because I can pick where the holes are going to be. So I like to place them in such a way where they actually, they're actually closer to the edges rather than from the factory, the original holes. They kind of put them a little bit closer to the center. And so it, it just has more gaps when the heel base starts to come unglued, which is going to happen on any heel base. They'll start to come glued a little bit here and there. But the nails around the edges here that are closer to the edge of the perimeter, they tend to prevent that a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and run the nails all through, get everything glued up. I've got the uh, JR dovetail heels here. We'll get those glued up, stuck together, and we'll continue on. So as you've seen, I just uh, got a lot of that finished out, some of the light trimming around the edges and put the nails in. So I thought I'd kind of explain what was going on. So you saw me at first using this little tool here, little spiky guy there. So this I just used, it's a great indicator of where I should be aiming for the holes, like right here. I skipped only one hole right at that edge because it's that corner edge there and everything. I like to have the nails a little bit closer if possible. And then I skipped two little spikes in other words and then on this side just two spikes were skipped the whole time or indentations or markings or whatever so thought i'd kind of uh explain that then i got this punch all right here that i had gone ahead and pre-punched some of the holes makes it a lot easier otherwise if i'm just going straight for the nails one they're kind of short you can see right there and so when i'm trying to like position it and hit it with the hammer probably more than half the time I end up hitting my finger first. So it makes it a little easier if the holes are pre-punched and I'm able to just stick these guys in at least as deep as I can, the nails, and then hammer them in there. And then I finish it off with uh, one of these uh, punches here. It kind of helps get the nails sitting down a little bit more flush, in other words, inside the leather, instead of just sitting over top. So kind of gonna give you guys a little bit of an idea of what was going on I had gone through already with the heel and used some neutral cream as well on it and uh, now it's time to go ahead and touch up those edges a little bit more as you can see there's some of that there that's not finished out so I need to go through make sure all that's nicely finished out a little bit on the sanders we're gonna do the uh, numb K sander to touch that up because the majority of the bulk of the sanding is all taken care of now it's that little fine touching everywhere and uh, finally the edging that we're gonna go ahead and do it so let's move on
All right, everyone. So we've got them all finished out here. All around. Got the edges. Did the heel touch up a little bit. And we're going to keep these all neutral and everything. I did try to keep get that heel a little bit darkened up. But I think I might press just a little bit too hard in that center there with the buffers and all that kind of stuff. Just a tad bit. Sometimes I get a little too rough with those neutral naked finishes. But it is the heel after all. I kind of like that, uh, you know, multi-tone look and everything like that. I don't like just a straight finish. I mean, that kind of natural leather effect to me is a little little more elegant looking when it's got that either marbling or those minor imperfections that leather also kind of shows off because after all this sole is one piece of leather this is a completely different piece of leather so sometimes they react a little bit different between each other as far as what shade they'll take on and everything uh, Marcus has gone through and done some custom patina work you can see a little bit darker around there and everything that's beautiful I love that right there and then just a little bit darker on that toe into that fading effect there so it's going to also have a natural patina over a period of time with the lighter colored shoes it's very normal very common to see and everything so at this point we're all done um we're just gonna go ahead and take some pictures of these and Marcus had taken some before pictures unfortunately I didn't get to them so Stay tuned to check those out at the end, so before and afters and all that as well, and then seeing what it looks like in the after image. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, these were the Alden J. Crew ones. Definitely an awesome shoe. I would love to own a pair myself of these. And uh, if you have a pair, definitely worth it. Don't, don't toss them or anything. Get them repaired, get them resold, whatever you can do to get them to last a while. They're a well worth it shoe. So... Again, hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button because there's a YouTube algorithm that helps the channel grow more. And uh, also make sure to share, comment if you have a shorter question or detail that you'd want to mention as well. Otherwise, uh, if it's a more detailed question that you have or anything, shoot us a message on Facebook at Cobblers Plus or on Instagram at Cobblers Plus CO. We'll tend to respond a little bit quicker than email. Email gets a little backed up with a lot of junk and spam, so it kind of takes a while to sift through it. So quicker responses is either you call message us through Facebook or Instagram or swing on by if you're local here in the Denver area. Otherwise, um, yeah, hit that notification bell icon and we'll see you in the next video.